Hello, you wonderful people. Because of my ADHD, I had to take a slight detour from building my Coding After 30 website where you could check out all the courses that I offer here for absolutely free, which is really cool because when you view a course, you're able to not only watch the video that's obviously on YouTube, but you're able to see the course notes with all the code snippets and everything else you need. And no, you do not have to pay anything. Yes. You do have to sign up if you want, but you don't have to because we have the sign in button and I'm including a dummy account here that you could use to sign in and consume all the videos. And in today's video, I want to talk about this new project that I'm working on or starting with. It is this e-commerce grocery store built with Next.js styled by Chat CN UI components. And of course, using my favorite headless CMS, which is Strapi. And I am using Strapi 5, which is due to release later soon next month this month within the next three weeks or so and in this video i just want to walk you through the project show you how my next GS is working with my strappy headless cms but more importantly show you two things in code that i think you would want to see one is how i'm handling dynamic data in my next GS application and two how i'm using revalidate tag to revalidate data in two different places for instance when i add or delete an item from cart it's going to not only update the information in that particular cart component but it's going to update the cart items in the header and in this application i'm not using any state management library my state is literally my database and with server react components and using tools like revalidate tag and using server actions we are able to accomplish where we able to revalidate different items based on changes in our application so let's do a quick tour of our application we have our top header which has our logo link categories for our users to select and we have our sign-in that takes you to the sign-in page back in our landing page here we have our slider with some beautiful images then we have shop by categories where you could select the category that you want and then we have our featured produce and the first cool part that i want to show you is that this landing page all the data is controlled and stored inside our headless cms so here i have a single type called homepage, and notice here i have a slider categories grid and produce grid which showcases our slider our categories and our feature produce and if i wanted to easily add something else i could totally do that for instance i want to add another produce grid so i'm going to add click components and so far i have three slider category grid and produce grid make sure you keep that in mind in just a moment when we look at the next js code but i'm going to go ahead and add a product grid i'm going to open it up and i'm going to call this just arrived and going to say check out these new fresh items beautiful and here i'm just gonna go ahead and add some items let's do an apple let's add steak and a blueberry muffin that seems perfect and i'm gonna go ahead click save and publish and now when we go back to our front end and refresh and we scroll down notice we had our feature produce and now we have just arrived with the three items that i added which is because now a non-technical editor or a content manager could easily add data to your application and as a developer this allows you to focus on building cool things rather than managing your data and that's the power of a headless cms so now as we mentioned before when we took a look at our different blocks we have our slider category grid and product grid so now let's take a look in our next.js application to see how this logic is implemented in strapi we are able to expose our homepage via api so if we go to settings under roles public and we scroll down to our homepage, notice how i'm giving it fine method you could see that we could navigate to this endpoint to get all of our items when we make a call to that endpoint and i omitted some items just so we could make sure that we could still see it on screen notice that we have our data and we have our blocks like we have our slider we have our category grid another product grid and another product grid so depending on items you have in strapi in our home page here we, you can have more items than what i have here so far you're going to be able to get it via your rest api taking a look at the code in our main page.tsx file 
we have this loader function. Don't ask me why I like calling things loader. We're calling a method called get home page data. If we take a look, it is making a call to our endpoint. We're passing some populate params to populate the data that we want. And we're just making a fetch request. This is just a wrapper function I created that under the hood, it's still using fetch to get all the necessary data. Back in our homepage, once we get the data from our loader, we are able to directly reference it inside our React server component. And that's the beauty of it. We're literally able to make our API call because this runs on the server. Then we're passing this to a function that uses a method called block renderer. If you take a look here at the block renderer, I'm iterating through response that I got and we're matching our different blocks that we have. For instance, if you have a slider block, go ahead and render it. And every time it matches, it will go ahead and render this appropriate component. And just like I have my slider component, my categories grid component, and my product grid component in Next.js, my Strapi application has that equivalent component. Slider, category grid, and product grid. And that is mapped to my Next.js components. Slider, category grid, and product grid. And that is how I'm able to achieve this dynamic behavior where a user is able to dynamically add data in my Strap application and it will automatically in our front end. For instance, for no apparent reason, I decided that we don't need to have just arrived items anymore. I could delete it, save and publish. And now back in our front end application, notice we're back down to our three sections. So now first, let me go ahead to sign in, test user at email.com test user. And now I want to show you how I'm able to revalidate this cart based on the newly added items, including here. So here in the bottom, I'm going to pick ice cream and we're going to get 100 of those and click add to cart. Notice how this cart has been updated, including here as well. If I go to another item, Let's say we need more butter in our life and I'll add 50 sticks of butter and click add to cart. Notice this has updated here. It has updated in our cart. If I do the same thing, open this cart here and delete an item, I decided I don't want ice cream. I just want to eat butter. Notice how it gets updated here automatically. So how does this happen without using state in Next.js? So let's take a look at the code. Highly recommend check out Next.js docs and read about revalidate tag. That's exactly what's going to allow this magic to happen. Here in my code, I have a form called add item to cart form. That's responsible for our view where we see the product description and see the add to cart button. So that's the form I'm talking about. Whenever I hit add to cart button, it fires a server action. If I scroll up to the top of the form, you can see that I'm calling add item to cart action. When we take a look at this action in greater detail, we have the basic logic that gets our form data. And once we make our fetch request to add the item to cart, notice here I'm calling revalidate tag and I'm passing cart items. What this does, it re-triggers a fetch request where we added this tag. In this case, it's getting and refreshing all the cart items. So whenever I click add to cart, this triggers that revalidate tag function, which tells the loader that it's responsible for the cart items and the number of items here to refresh. So let's take a look in the code. Here's the function called get cart items. It is responsible for both getting the items in our cart here, as well as getting items in the cart here. And it is responsible for updating the items in cart. Whenever we click add to cart, it fires our action that calls our cart item revalidate tag. And how does our cart know to retrigger? If we take a look at our get cart items loader, which is responsible for getting the data, you notice that we set our tag using the next param that we're able to pass into our fetch data function is just a wrapper for Next.js fetch that comes with Next.js. So if you're looking at the documentation, 
you can't see here we're showing how we're able to trigger the revalidate tag and here you could see how we're able to add tags to our fetch response and that is how we're able to have this dynamic functionality where i'm able to make changes in one place like delete all the items and the state is going to be represented in another place like this top header and this happens by re-triggering the validate tag which makes a call to our endpoint and gets the new data which is stored in strapi so if we take a look at order items we have no items because there is no items in my cart with that being said if you enjoyed the videos that i do here i am continuing to learn new things and i'm making these free courses absolutely free that you could find at codingafter30.com all these courses are still work in progress, so bear with me. If you want to take a look at where I'm going over through all the basics for Next.js, check out this Next.js crash course. We have three videos and I'm in the process of working on the fourth. And what's cool about it is that you have all the class notes that you need, including code snippets for the video. Thank you for checking out this video. I've decided I'm going to focus a lot on building for the next six months. So everything that I'm learning, I'm going to share with these free tutorials online. I find that through teaching, it points out your shortcomings and where you need more practice and improvement. And why not share it with you, the viewers, all the cool things that I'm doing. But with that being said, thank you for your support and I'll see you in the next video.